Welcome again in my course Power Electronics Application in Power System. So, in the last lecture, I started a new module uh, for discussion uh, that is the application of uh, static VAR compensator in power system. Now, this implies to the fact that S SVC can be used, static VAR compensator can be used in uh, enhancement the power uh, system capacity or power system capability in various aspects. For example, in the last lecture I have shown you that how can uh, a SBC be used in enhancing the power transfer capacity of a transmission line and I have mathematically uh, shown you uh, how can it be possible and for doing so what should be the rating requirement of SBC that also I discuss and it uh, I have shown you. Uh, that uh, the ideally to enhance the power transfer capacity of a transmission line to twice of the uncompensated line by using a SVC placement at the midpoint of the transmission line. It is possible to uh, have a, uh, this trans increase in transfer capacity of twice of the uncompensated line, but practically the size of that compensator or size of the SVC which would be required for doing so would be very large. So, therefore, this uh, to, to limit the capacity of the SBC to a practically feasible uh, value, we, we, we can uh, do one thing that we can uh, use this uh, SBC for uh, increasing the power transmission capacity up to a certain value of this line loading and then beyond that we can use it as a fixed capacitor. Remember, I discussed the same problem when I talk about this midpoint compensation in general. Okay. So, if we do so, then uh, I, I explain that up to a certain line loading, uh, up to a certain amount of line loading, the SPC can provide uh, the required amount of compensation, what is required uh, to increase the power transfer capacity and beyond that it will act as a fixed capacitor. So, therefore, uh, this will make it possible to have a um, practically feasible size of SVC. Okay. Then I also started the discussion on the SVC in uh, improving the transient stability of power system. I explained what is transient stability and I also explained how an SVC placement can improve the transient stability of a power system. In this particular lecture, I will continue to that. Okay. So, let us proceed. So, if you can remember in my last lecture, look at I discussed this uh, uh, this equal area criteria, I discussed this equal area criteria uh, for uncompensated line and also for midpoint SVC compensated line. Okay. Now, for uncompensated line, uh, if I repeat the explanation once again very briefly, then you can see that this is what the P delta curve, P means power transfer and delta is the uh, angular difference of this sending end bus and receiving end bus. So, this is V at an angle delta, this is V at an angle 0, this is receiving end bus for example and this is sending end bus. Okay. So, depending upon the loading of this line, this amount of this uh, the value of the delta will get change. And if we plot this P versus delta characteristics, so this will be plot. Okay. Now, suppose if, if there is a, uh, so uh, without uh, having uh, any fault, so suppose this is what the operating condition which is represented by delta 1. Okay. So, this is what the operating point at which the system is working. Now, what do you mean by this operating point? At this particular point, this P make that is the mechanical power is equal to the electrical power which is represented by this characteristics. Okay. Now, when it is happening, so here P make is basically mechanical power. Okay. Now, what do you mean by mechanical power? I hope that you understand. Uh, uh, mechanical power is the power available in the shaft of the electrical generator and electrical power is the uh, output of the electrical generator. So, at this operating point, this mechanical power and electrical power will really equal. So, this is our operating point. Now, if suppose there is a fault in the line which is represented by this, then what will happen? The electrical power would be 0 and mechanical power will be 
however continuing to the value as it is. Now this will make the machine increase in its speed and suppose at this particular point which is represented by delta the fault is clear this fault is of transient type and this fault is clear. Then what will happen at this particular point again electrical power is that much and mechanical power remains same. So, therefore, electrical power becomes higher than the mechanical power. Okay. So, what will happen followed by this the machine will continue to decelerate and it will increase the value of uh, this delta further and at this particular value suppose represented by delta 3 this accelerating area which is represented by this has given by this which is p mechanical uh, multiplied by this difference of this delta 2 to delta 1 this is equated with the deceleration power which is represented by this has area. Okay. So, this is what the equal area criteria I hope you have gone through this in very well in electrical power system course. Now, again there exist a, a value of delta which is represented by delta max which represents that if delta 3 is shifted to delta max means that uh, this fault clear is delayed to some value of this delta higher than delta 2 and uh, this delta 3 is exactly superimposed with delta max then uh, it is possible that this equal area criteria would be satisfied. Now, equal area criteria is the essential condition to, to have the uh, stable operation of the system. Okay. Now, therefore, maximum value of this delta 3 would be equal to delta max okay. and beyond which if delta 3 wants to shift then it would be not possible to have a stable operation. So, therefore, it is recommended that this delta 3 it should be distant from this delta max as possible okay. and uh, thus this area which represents under this particular characteristics represented by red hash is called marginal area. It means that it uh, there is a margin of this uh, stability if delta 3 is uh, located at this point and uh, it is far away from the delta max. Now, this explanation is for uncompensated line. For midpoint compensated SVC line, you can see. So, suppose this is what the counterpart of delta 1, write it delta 1 C to represent it is delta 1 compensated, uh, uh, delta 1 for compensated line, and this one is the point where fault is cleared. Let us represent it by delta 2 C. Here, superscript C is representing this delta 2 for compensated line and this is suppose delta 3. Okay. So, delta 3 C and this is what this delta max C. So, you can see if you have the same explanation for this compensated line as well, this marginal area which is available to uh, retain the stability of the net to, uh, of the system is much higher than this. So, this whole explanation gives us that the marginal area of the SBC compensated layer line is higher than the uncompensated line because from this eventually you can see that delta uh, this A C max A C max which represents the marginal area of the compensated line is greater than or much much greater than this uh, A C mar which represents the marginal area which is higher than this A mar. So, it means that for a midpoint compensated SBC line we have uh, more distant or more available area to keep the system stable. Okay. So, that is how the SBC can improve the transient stability or that is how the SBC the or rather the presence of SBC can ensure the higher degree of transient stability for the SBC compensated line. Okay. Now, we will go further with this uh, and to show that how SBC further improves. Uh, this this transient stability of a power system. In order to discuss that, let us start with this another important concept of power system which is called swing equation. This is again taught in uh, electrical power system course. Now, what do we mean by swing equation? So, I will start with initially the swing equation for uncompensated line. uncompensated 
line. Now, what is swing equation? This swing equation says that this if you ignore the damping now uh, eventually we consider that the system is lossless. Uh, so, therefore, uh, if when a system is having no loss, so there is no damping as well. Uh, why it is so? I will come to that. Okay. Even it is uh, taught also in the power system course. Now, if there is no damping uh, in the system, in basically in synchronous generator which are operating in conventional power plant, there are two uh, torque or two power components exist. One is power developed by the turbine which is uh, that is the power available at the shaft of the generator and another is the power generation by the generator. So, one is called mechanical power, another is called electrical power and their relation, the relation between this mechanical power and electrical power is represented by this swing equation. Okay. So, according to the swing equation we know m d 2 delta d t 2 is equal to p mechanical minus p electrical. So, it is basically as you know this p is p mechanical represents that mechanical power mechanical power available at the shaft of the machine and p basically represents electrical power output of the generator electrical power output of the generator and m, m is basically you know the constant inertia constant. So, this represents the swing equation. So, if p make for a stable operating condition p make is ideal equal to p. So, that there is no advancement of this delta no rate of change of this delta, but delta magnitude will be there. Okay. Now, if we take a small perturbation for small perturbation around the op stable operating point, this equation can be written as m d 2 del delta d t 2 is equal to del p make minus del p. Okay. Now, this del p make it is the change of this mechanical power it is virtually equal to 0 because this mechanical power cannot be instantaneously change okay, uh, followed by a small uh, time interval. So, therefore, this we consider that this is equal to 0. So, therefore, this equation can be rewritten as m d 2 del delta d t 2 plus del p is equal to 0. Okay. Now, we know that this del p what it is actually it is the change of the active power and uh, if we consider that the compensated line is symmetrical and at the both ends the voltage magnitudes are regulated and it, they are kept as fixed and they are kept as constant. So, therefore, this del p is basically function of del delta. So, we can write this is basically equal to m d 2 del delta d t 2 plus del p del delta multiplied by del delta is equal to 0 because you know this p is basically function of delta only it is function of uh, other parameters, but they are fixed p is function of p is equal to v square by x sin delta for a short line where v is the voltages at both the end x is the line reactance for a lossless line. Okay. So, therefore, p is uh, since v square by x this is constant. So, therefore, uh, this p is uh, uh, p will proportionally vary to sin delta or delta. Okay. So, therefore, we can write this. So, now you can see there is a termin termin terminology which is coming out to be del p del delta. Now, we can write this as a the same equation as d 2 delta d t 2 plus del p del delta upon 1 by m 
I am just dividing the whole equation with del delta. So, this is equal to 0. Now, what is that order of this differential equation? This is a second order differential equation, differential equation okay. and the solution of this will be uh, if you convert it to the Laplace domain will be equal to s square plus omega square equal to 0, where omega is the frequency of the oscillation. So, therefore, you know that there are two possible cases case 1. So, this will basically follow the second order differential equation that is s square plus omega square is equal to 0, where uh, omega is basically equal to 1 upon m d p d delta. Now, you know there are one case 1 where this d p d delta is greater than 0 and case 2 is del p del delta less than 0. So, suppose uh, there are two cases uh, if we consider so. Now, what will happen if d p d delta greater than 0? So, then uh, this this uh, value of s will be equal to uh, plus minus j root over 1 by m del p del delta. Okay. So, this will be so roots of the equation roots of the equation will lie in imaginary axis imaginary axis. Okay. Whereas, if d p d delta less than equal to 0 then what would be the solution? Uh, if it is less than equal to 0. So, this will be equal to plus minus root over 1 upon m del p del delta. So, this means here roots are real one is positive another is negative roots are of real one is positive another is in, in fact both would be positive rather, but the roots are real one of them them will be uh, definitely positive. Now, when we have so uh, we know that when these roots of the characteristic equation lie in the imaginary axis. So, this is a case of marginal stability. This is what the control system knowledge we have. Okay. Whereas, when uh, one of the roots is real can be real, then there is a instability. This ref implies to the instability in the system. So, therefore, this uh, d p d delta less than 0 it implies to instability. So, this is one of the important criteria even if I do not discuss I think uh, it is this is known to those who have understood the power system stability part. Okay. So, here you can see the importance of this value this del p del delta. In fact, this del p del delta del p del delta is basically known as synchronizing synchronizing power coefficient. So, it, it basically represents the stiffness of the uh, system uh, how much strip it, it, it is towards the uh, uh, this this disturbance. Okay. So, higher value of de, uh, means uh, you know a positive value of de p de delta is basically the primary condition for the stability and that is why you, you know that in here we consider that this is the maximum uh, delta corresponding to pi by 2 is the maximum uh, operating point uh, maximum theoretical operating point of a uh, transmission line because this up to this you can have this positive d p d delta. Okay. Beyond that d delta del p del delta would be negative. 
therefore, uh, we cannot operate it ok that will not provide any stable operating point. So, that is something uh, already uh, discussed in power system course any uh, basic power system course and I just revisit this idea once again. And uh, the idea of this uh, this particular lecture would be uh, to see how this del p del delta this particular quantity is getting affected for the midpoint compensated or rather midpoint SVC compensated line that is what we will try to uh, see in this part of the lecture. Okay. So, what we will see is synchronizing power coefficient of a midpoint SVC compensated line. So, this is something we need to see over here. Okay. So, this is something we need to see. So, in order to understand this let us consider a transmission line. Here this is sending end site, this is receiving end site. The voltage of the sending end site let us consider V1 at an angle delta. The voltage at the receiving end site let us consider V2 at an angle 0. So, this is receiving end this is sending end. Okay. And at this midpoint of the line there is a SVC connected. Okay. Now, how we will represent this SVC? SVC we already we, are, uh, we have talked this SVC is represented by a variable susceptance that is VSVC. So, VSVC is the model or rather uh, the susceptance variable susceptance susceptance representing SVC. Okay. Now, suppose this reactance of the line is x by 2 and x by 2. So, basically x is the line reactance and most importantly we have considered again some assumptions here. What are the assumptions we have considered to uh, derive? So, the first assumption is that uh, the line is lossless, lossless line and second assumption is that since x is the line reactance I specified that means automatically you are considering short line model, short line model which is somewhat different to what we discuss as a long line model. In fact, if you can derive the expression of this synchronizing power coefficient uh, uh, for a midpoint SVC compensated line for a short transmission line model, then automatically you can be able to do the same computation or same uh, derivation for a long line as well. Those things uh, will come later on. Okay. So, this is what the uh, assumption. Now, what we will do again? So, here since it is midpoint of this line let us consider voltage at this midpoint is Vm and the angular is angle is del m. Okay. Now, if this is a symmetrical line that is V1 is equal to V2 then we know that also the value of Vm and we know del, del m is will be equal to del by 2, but we are not doing so here. Let us uh, keep it uh, del m considering that V1 V2 are different. Right. Now, what we will we can do is that we can apply KCL at this particular node. So, let us apply Kirchhoff's current law KCL at the midpoint node, midpoint node. So, if we apply KCL at this midpoint node, what would be my KCL equation? The KCL equation would be so current uh, coming in from the sending end to the uh, midpoint will be V1 at an angle delta minus Vm 
at an angle del m divided by x divided by 2. So, this is what the incoming current coming from the sending end to the midpoint. Similarly, uh, current coming from this receiving end to the midpoint would be equal to V2 at an angle 0 minus Vm at an angle del m divided by x by 2. And if you sum up these two, then this would be equal to the outgoing current which is current flowing through the SVC. Now, what would be the current uh, flowing through the SVC? We know that this SVC is represented by a variable susceptance that is BSVC. So, that will be equal to the current uh, drawn by this uh, SVC which is equal to JBSVC multiplied by this voltage that is Vm at an angle del m. Okay. So, you know that J B S V C is representing the S V C, the susceptance of the S V C. Now, we will do the simplification of this equation. So, what we will do is that we will bring this all this uh, V M term to the other side and we will keep the other side here uh, which are non V M term that is V 1 at an angle delta plus V 2 at an angle 0 divided by x by 2. Okay. So, this is equal to, so if we bring this term and that term in that equation, so this will be equal to 2 V m at an angle del m divided by x by 2 plus j B S V C V m at an angle del m. Okay. Now, this we can further simplify considering this V m del m outside. So, if we consider so, so this will be equal to 2 divided by x by 2, another uh, this this will be equal to plus j b s p c, right. So, so we can write it as a v m del m. So, this is nothing but 4 by x plus j b s p c. So, I have done a mistake over here. Basically, since we have considered J term to represent V S V C, so I should term uh, J, I should use J term here as well. So, this will be J over here, this will be J over here, this will be J over here and this will be J over here. So, there will be J term over here, there should be J term over here as well. So, this is something that you should understand. Okay. Now, what we can do is, we can find out what is that Vm del m in terms of this. So, in order to from, from this equation, what we can write is this Vm at an angle del m is equal to V1 at an angle. So, what I did is this particular component, I just uh, multiply with the denominator of the other side uh, that is left hand side equation. So, what I will get that is Vm at an angle delta plus V 2 at an angle 0 divided by J x y 2 multiplied by 4 by J x plus J B S V C. Okay. All right. Now, what we will do is we will consider, so this is what we get first of all, this is what we get the equation of the midpoint voltage in terms of the the sending end voltage, receiving end voltage and the impedances we have. Now, what we will do again? We consider the entire denominator this that is j x by 2 multiplied by 4 divided by j x plus j b s v c is equal to x c. Let us consider that x c is basically representing the whole denominator of this right hand side of the equation. Now, what we will get uh, this now? So, we can write if we just copy this over here uh, once again. So, j uh, this x c is basically representing uh, if I see what it is, it is equal to uh, j x by 2 multiplied by 4 by j x plus j 
B S B C. I think I have written uh, this equation correctly. Yes, J X by 2 multiplied by 4 plus J X plus J B S B C. So, this is representing X e. Let us consider this X e is something something like equivalent uh, reactants or something like that or uh, that will come to later on. So, uh, what I can write I can just multiply this here. So, what I will get? So, this will be equal to this j x divided by 2 multiplied by 4 by j x plus j j if we multiply this will be j square b s b c multiplied by x by 2. Okay. Now, here you can see that j x j x will be cancelled out. So, 2 and 4 will have this 2 j square means minus 1. So, this uh, b s b c x by 2. So, this is what x e it is independent of j term that you can see over here it is independent of j term. Okay. So, uh, what about this other equation other equation we got the main equation which is this. So, what we can uh, copy from here is v m del m is equal to this v 1 at an angle delta plus v 2 at an angle 0 divided by x. This is another equation we get. Okay. Now, from this particular equation from this particular equation if we just uh, you can see this uh, left hand side and right hand side both are you know phasor form or phasor representation and they are in uh, polar form. So, what we can write? Um, uh, we can equate equate this real and imaginary part imaginary parts of this left hand side equation with right hand side equation right hand side expression. So, what we will get? So, if we just uh, equate with this real part of this left hand side which will be equal to V m cos del m right. So, basically this V m uh, at an angle del m is a representation of V m cos del m plus V m uh, j V m sin del m. So, so, basically real part is V m cos del m and this equation is uh, 1 upon x e multiplication of V 1 cos delta plus v 2 this is what this equating real part. So, this equation we get equating real part real parts of left hand side to right hand side of this equation. Okay. So, this is one equation that we get the another equation we get by equating imaginary part which will be V m sin del m which is equal to 1 upon x e. So, what will be that imaginary part of V r V 1 at an angle delta? So, it will be V 1 sin delta and what would be the imaginary part of V 2 at an angle 0 that would be 0 that is 0. Okay. So, this is what the another equation we get this is what another equation we get this equation we get equating imaginary parts parts of left hand side to right hand side right. So, we get two equations. Now, both the equation will be useful in further derivation because you can see here our goal is to determine the synchronizing power coefficient. So, we have to go a long way to, to, to find it out. Now, uh, what we can do is that further uh, we, we need to find out this uh, uh, compensated power flow through the line due to the uh, placement of the SVC at the midpoint. Because you know that when uh, there is a midpoint compensation, uh, the active power flow through a transmission line will also get changed. This I have shown you at the very beginning 
okay, when I discuss this power flow due to midpoint compensation. So, here also it is uh, natural that this power flow will get changed because of the midpoint SBC. So, we need to find out the expression for that. So, the power flow of the line due to the midpoint SPC placement is what would be that? This will be uh, you know this is will be equal to P compensated power is equal to uh, this uh, you can look at this uh, particular segment one is V 1 at an angle delta another is this V m at an angle delta. Okay. All right. So, the power flow of this would be equal to this V 1 multiplied by this V m divided by the angular difference of del m and uh, this delta which will be equal to delta by 2 already we have explained. And so, the equation of this will be equal to either this V 1 V m divided by x by 2 sin delta by 2 or this will be equal to V 1 uh, V 2 V m which divided by x by 2 sin delta by 2 both are equal both should be equal ok both should be equal because del m would be equal to delta by 2 this is already I have shown you various times. Now, if it is so now what we can see if we can uh, consider that del m is equal to del by 2. So, you can replace this by sin delta by 2 this one you also can replace it by cos delta by 2. Okay. So, therefore, this V m sin delta by 2 is equal to this V 1 sin delta divided by x e. Okay. So, if we can put over here this is the equation if we consider that del m is equal to del by 2 which is the angular displacement at the midpoint voltage. So, if you put it this expression over here then just means that we are just replacing V m sin delta by 2 with this. So, here you can see that uh, in both the equations we have V m sin delta by 2 this equation also having V m sin delta by 2. So, if we just replace this with this then what we will get? We get P comp is equal to for this particular equation it will be V 1 square sin delta divided by x x c divided by 2. Uh, if we put this V m sin delta by 2 in this particular equation or it will be equal to uh, this V 1 V 2 then uh, divided by x c x x c by 2 multiplied by sin delta. So, either of these equations would be true and if we consider V 1 is equal to V 2 both equations will be eventually equal. Okay. So, uh, both the equations will be true for representation of this uh, active power flow of the line active power flow of the line. Okay. Now, here you can see that that the denominator is of the both the equations are same which is representing x x b x c by 2 and we know that x is equal to this. So, therefore, the denominator of the compensated power the denominator of the compensated power equation will be x x c divided by 2 which can be written as x by 2 multiplied by x c we know it is equal to 2 minus you can see over here uh, it is representation of 2 minus this equation 2 minus B S B C multiplied by x by 2. 
so it is equal to 2 minus b s v c multiplied by x by 2. So, that is what the representation. So, it can be uh, written as x if we just put this 2 inside multiplied by 1 minus b s v c x by 4. Okay. So, this is the representation of x x c by 2 which is the denominator of the compensated power. Okay. Uh, basically, you can see over here is that this uh, uh, see although this x x c by 2 uh, is the denominator, but it has some impact in change in power flow. Okay. Because uh, you can see here v 1 is constant, v 2 is constant and if we consider this uh, delta for a particular loading, so delta will be also same. Okay. So, for a particular loading, uh, we can change the compensated power by changing the denominator this. Now, how can we change this denominator? Denominator is possible to change because here you see x is constant, x is the line reactance. B S V C is, is a parameter which represents the susceptance of the line uh, S V C which is this and this is variable. You can see this is variable. By varying the susceptance of the S V C, the denominator of the compensated power uh, flow of the transmission line can be uh, changed or can be regulated. Okay. So, that is uh, one thing that you can learn over here. Okay. Now, what we can do over here is that uh, important remarks. Important remarks. So, number one. So, if we consider that uh, this uh, x is in per unit and b s v c is also in per unit. So, since both x and b s v c are usually represented by represented by per unit that is p dot u so, you know all these power uh, system quantities usually represent in per unit for various reason so therefore uh, we, what we can write and both are both are uh, less than 1 so you know that per unit quantities can vary from 0 to 1 so both are less than 1 the factor factor x multiplied by 1 minus that is this factor I am talking about x multiplied by b s v c multiplied by x divided by 4 will be less than 1 if B S V C is positive. Now, here is one thing that you can remember when I discuss this S V C, for example, the T S C T C R, you can see that this S V C susceptance can be of positive, can be of negative as well. Now, when this S V C susceptance is positive, uh, this is something you should understand when this SVC susceptance is positive when there is a capacitive mode of operation. That means, whole uh, you know BSBC will act as a capacitive mode and uh, it, it injects certain amount of reactive part to the system. Okay. So, in, during that time this SVC uh, this BSBC would be positive and when this BSBC will be negative when it is operated as a inductive compensation mode that means uh, to hold uh, SVC uh, is used to consume certain amount of VAR from the system. Okay. So, that is something already I discussed. So, when uh, so that means this, this factor will be less than 1 uh, when the BSVC is positive. So, that is that is capacitive mode of operation mode of operation. Okay. okay. 
और कैपेसिटिव कॉम्पेंसेशन और कैपेसिटिव कॉम्पेंसेशन ओके सो देयर फोर दस फॉर कैपेसिटिव कॉम्पेंसेशन फॉर एस बी सी एक्टिंग एज कैपेसिटिव कॉम्पेंसेशन P comp that is compensative power would be higher than this P that is uncompensated uh, power of the uncompensated line power of uncompensated line okay so that is uh, you should understand now for inductive compensation for sbc acting as inductive compensation acting as inductive compensation mode p comp will be lower than p okay because why it is so because Uh, when uh, it is acting as inductive compensation, B S B C is negative, meaning that whole equation would be higher than X. Okay, X is the uh, that means uh, this there will be an additional term uh, of this uh, uh, in this particular equation above this X. So therefore, it is basically uh, this whole X X C by two. Basically, in this case, X X C by two will be higher than X. okay so and that is what is it is happening and that's why uh, in fact i told you during this drawing of this particular characteristics for uh, midpoint sbc compensated line i told you when this sbc is acting as a uh, fixed capacitance so it 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 will act it will act as a uh, it equation will uh, this particular uh, uh, characteristics will be shifted like this so i will re uh, revisit this idea once again it means that suppose suppose this is my p delta characteristics p delta characteristics or p comp del p or or p comp p comp is the compensated power suppose this is the comp uh, you know p delta characteristic corresponds to uncompensated line this is corresponds to uncompensated line okay so this is what the characteristic it represents exactly a sin delta and you know this corresponds to delta is equal to 0 this corresponds to delta is equal to pi by 2 and this corresponds to delta is equal to pi okay suppose this is the characteristics of this uncompensated line which is representing p is equal to p max Uh, sin delta then for compensated line acting as a capacitive mode of operation will be something like this so this will be p comp for capacitive svc mode of operation or capacitive mode of operation of sbc okay so this uh, it means that this p comp would be higher than this uncompensated line line power similarly when this uh, uh, this when this is this will be operating in the inductive mode of operation the characteristics will be something like this so this is what p comp for inductive mode of operation of sbc so this is something is very important you can see uh, in uh, so if sbc can change uh, the placement of sbc can change the power flow through a particular transmission line and uh, how can it uh, change 
by changing simply this uh, uh, magnitude of BSBC. So, uh, BSBC can be positive, BSBC can be negative as well. So, when BSBC is uh, positive, it, uh, SBC is operating as a capacitive mode uh, and when uh, BSBC is negative means that it implies to that uh, the SBC is operating in the inductive mode. Okay. So, therefore, this power flow through the transmission line will accordingly change. So, uh, my goal of uh, this particular lecture is to clarify this gap that we have drawn in the earlier uh, lecture. So, this is basically uh, this characteristic corresponds to this characteristics corresponds to this SVC, SVC for this unlimited compensation when SVC can provide it unlimited compensation to hold to hold midpoint voltage constant and this is what the characteristics this is what the characteristics corresponds to this characteristics corresponds to uh, SVC for fixed capacitor mode of operation this is SVC for fixed capacitor mode of operation. That is why I told you in this particular lecture that for a practical uh, uh, SVC what it is done is that it follows this, this characteristics where SVC can provide unlimited compensation up to a certain point when it reaches the rating of that SVC and beyond which it will act as a fixed capacitor. So, fixed capacitor characteristics is something like this this is uh, what the fixed ca capacitor characteristics which is of course the above the uh, this uh, uncompensated line for uncompensated line the characteristics was this for uncompensated uh, line uh, this characteristics was this this is what the characteristics for uncompensated line this is what the characteristics of a fixed uh, capacitor line and this is what the characteristics of uh, this SBC when we assume that SBC can provide uh, unlimited compensation uh, for this uh, for holding this midpoint voltage constant. This is something you should understand and the mathematical aspect of this already is uh, explained in this today's lecture. That means, we you will come to know by uh, this today's lecture that how this SVC mode of operation or different uh, mode of operation of SVC can change or can result in the change of the active power flow through the transmission line. This is what the uh, point I want to make here. So, in the next lecture we will continue this derivation till we arrive at this our goal that is we, we are interested to determine the synchronous power coefficient of a midpoint SPC compensated line. This we will continue in the next lecture. Okay. So, thank you very much for attending this part of the lecture.